everyone welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video and spending some time with me today i have a really exciting video it's all about eyeshadow palettes which is some of my favorite videos to watch and film and today we're going to be talking all about the eyeshadow palettes in my collection that i think are perfect for the winter so if you're curious to find out what are the eyeshadow palettes i will be reaching for this winter then i hope that you will stick around and keep on watching everyone how are you guys doing i hope that you're having a great week and staying warm this winter wherever it is you are i guess it's not really winter for everybody watching depends where you are in the world but here in new york we're definitely in the throes of winter so i figured even though a lot of people have already filmed their top picks for winter eyeshadow palettes i still have time to film this video and share with you guys what i'm going to be pulling for this season before we get started i just wanted to welcome you to my channel channel or welcome back if you've been here before thank you so much for stopping by for those of you meeting me for the very first time hi my name is natalia i'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty and 2023 is a year of discovery for me i'm really trying to focus on using things in my collection i have a lot of items i've never even tried before there should actually already be a video up about that about all of the eyeshadow palettes that are still brand new in my collection that i have yet to try it's it's just going to be a year where I really explore my collection and I'm hoping to come up with as many fun ideas and videos that will help motivate me to do that along the way. If you would like to explore your collection more alongside with me, I hope that you will consider subscribing and joining us here on the channel. All right, well, let's let's jump right on in because we all know I'm long-winded and we might as well start as soon as possible. I have a wide array of palettes in front of me. In fact, the way I'm going Going to break up this video is it's going to be in two parts. We're going to start with 10 eyeshadow palettes that range from new to my collection that I've discovered in 2022 and dating all the way back to when I first started getting into makeup. So a few of these palettes might be like super old, super, super old. So please don't judge. So we're going to have 10 palettes that I'm pretty familiar with. And then actually at the end of this video, what I'm going to do, and this was kind of inspired by my recent basket of a shame video that I did, which was part of my Martini Monday series, is I'm going to um, show you guys 10 brand new palettes that I have never tried on my eyeballs that I actually think would work quite well for this current winter season, and I'm going to tell you why. And I apologize if it sounds like I'm losing my voice, it's because I am a little bit. My schedule, my sleep schedule this week has been all sorts of a mess. I've actually been up since 2 a.m. yesterday or today or whatever. No. Nope yesterday because now we're pushing like past midnight of the following day so i've been up for like 22 hours <laughs> and while i really need to get to sleep i knew that if i don't film this video today i'm gonna have no content for you guys for a little while so so i figured even though i've had a super busy day since i have a face of makeup on from being out all day and uh working and attending a concert and all sorts of things i would use that to my advantage and jump on and try to film this video as i said if my voice sounds funny that's why I'm sorry, so let's see if I can get through this as quickly as possible. The first palette is a very old palette in my collection. This is the Dose of Colors Marvelous Mauves. I should probably do a little disclaimer on color stories that I personally associate with winter. Obviously, we're all different. You do whatever works for you. Maybe you're not even into seasonal palettes to begin with, but I do tend to grab for cooler tones. I tend to grab for more blues, more purples, more mauves silvers, grays, things like that. Things that are, you know, maybe not quite as bright and colorful and sunshiny, you know, that's something I would do more in spring and summer. And then of course in the fall, I do tend to go more for warmer tones, greens, plums around the holidays. Will you see some very mixed and a few colorful stories, color stories in here? Absolutely, because I do want to give myself some variety, but all of these are going to have at least a little bit of some 
something that I definitely associate with the fall because we also have Valentine's Day coming up. So Marvelous Moths is, well, it's, it's basically exactly what it says. It's a little tiny mauve palette. It has just five mattes, but I think these are great. These do have quite a lot of kick up when you go into the pan, but they blend beautifully even though I've had these for a while. I've used this palette not recently, but back in the day I've used this a lot. So I like to definitely come back to, this is a great one for easy looks. Like if, if I've got no time to think I need to just do something super, super quick and look really put together, this is absolutely perfect because it has a gradient of colors. They all work beautifully together. They all complement each other really nicely. If you have this palette and you need something to just be handy for quick on the go looks, consider pulling this out. This is all just to give you guys an inspiration. Maybe you have some of these and you've forgotten about them. So why not give our palettes that we already have some love instead of just looking for new things to buy? Because I'm sure, you know, when we're looking for new things to buy, it's easy to find new things to buy. It's not like the beauty industry is shut down and there are no more new releases. We know how that all goes. There's a new release every hour. Another small palette is going to be a Tom Ford quad and this one is Double Indemnity. Now this one is not, at least in my opinion, for me, is not like for every day. This is definitely more for if you want a really cool smoky eye. I've used this palette a couple of times only because it's it's, it's not really an everyday palette for me. It's kind of a special occasion. I have to be in the mood for a specific kind of look. But when I do pull for it, that look comes out so, so beautifully. And these shadows are so easy to work with. I really just started to discover Tom Ford this past year in 2022. And so far, I've been very much enjoying the shadows. I've been lucky enough to not ever have to pay full price for any of the quads that I have. I think I have four quads by now and I would never pay $90 for a Tom Ford quad. But this is again, just a reminder that if you already have these expensive bougie palettes pull them out use them enjoy them you know don't don't let them just sit there and wait for some sort of unbeknownst special occasion these eyeshadow palettes take hundreds of uses probably before you can use a, a shadow so definitely consider going through your collection and seeing what you can find okay so now while the tom ford uh, quad which had as you saw those beautiful grays and a black while that is a newer quad to me you I released a couple of years ago. This next palette is no longer even available, but if you have the Marc Jacobs Stiletto, there's the back. I'm not gonna really show you the front because it is so shiny and reflective. But if you have this palette, this is so perfect for a smoky eye. It just has a beautiful, cool tone mattes. Marc Jacobs is no longer available, but I do absolutely love these eyeshadows. They're just so, so easy and foolproof. And I have quite a few of these and I'm happy I do, even though they're not on the market anymore, just because it's one of those eyeshadow formulas that is almost impossible to mess up and you can create such quick, easy looks with this. Like you can take almost any of the mattes, throw it in the crease, put a shimmer over, you're out the door, super, super easy. The shade is really beautiful. I don't know, what is this called? I think it's called Sparkling. Sidewalks is where my pinky is and Sparkling is where my index finger is and I do love that shade. So if you have this palette, I think this is the perfect time of the year to use it. I definitely hope to get around to using it at least one or two times this season because I haven't used it in a while and I was going through my palettes and saw it and I was like, oh my goodness, I would love to get a chance to use that. I really miss that palette. All right, now since we're on the topic of older palettes, let's actually go through the next three because these are also older palettes um, in my collection. Well, one of them is actually fairly new to me. I only discovered it in, I think, 2021. It was a gift from a subscriber, but the other two I've had for a while. So there's going to be two ABH palettes. One is the infamous Sultry. I do think this is a perfect winter palette because it gives you neutrals. I don't think these are all cool tone. Personally, I think there's actually quite a few neutrals in here. It gives you the cool tones and it also gives you a pop of color. So on a dreary winter day, if you need a little pick me up and you want something a little more cheerful, you can definitely use 
use that colorful shade um, and these shimmers are still beautiful even though I've had this palette for a while this one has stood the test of time and so far it's staying strong and then the one that I discovered in 2021 and have wanted for many years is the Norvina so as I mentioned I wanted to include some pinks and purples and again while most of this is a warm tone palette neutral to warm but leaning definitely warm it has a few pops of like purples and I wouldn't say pinks but maybe peachy pinks that I think would be nice to have for the winter I think this is a great one to create some softer beautiful looks so I'm excited to pull this one out again and then the next palette is like a makeup artifact by now and some of you guys are probably going to look at this and say oh what you're still using it on your eyes that cannot be sanitary I sanitize my palettes once in a while and it's just me that uses them so if I want to use them I'm still going to use them I am talking about the Lorac Pro 2. This was the cool tone palette. Obviously, I don't think they make any of these anymore. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I don't even know, but I don't think they make these pro palettes. I think they've now taken all of these off the market and they have like a whole other collection, which I would actually love to try and see how the new formula is because these still are working fine. But of course, over the years, I have gotten used to other formulas. So these are much softer shimmers. They're definitely not as punchy, not as shimmery not as foiled, not as bright. But I still, I love my Lorac palettes and I have such sentimental, like they're, they're almost like a hug to me because they were some of the first palettes I ever bought and I do struggle to get rid of these. So since I still have this in my collection, I would like to actually try using it this winter and see how I like the formula now so many years later. But from what I remember, like the silver was fantastic. The blue was really fun to use. The green in here, the jade shade is really nice obviously you have tons of cool tone mattes and a few shimmers some of these colors are not going to work for every skin tone like some of these very uh, light ones maybe are not going to work for everybody but you know it, it's not like you're going out and getting this palette this is again inspo this is to remind you that if you have this palette winter is the perfect time to pull it out all right, we have four palettes left from my have used and loved and are familiar with collection. Next up is the BH Sweet Shop Bubblegum Palette. This is one of those palettes that I'll probably only use once or twice the whole season, and you can see why. This is definitely a monochromatic all blue palette, but I do like blues in the winter time. If there's ever that I'm going to wear blues, it's mostly going to be in in the winter and I think this has such a wide range of blues that I can go with something fairly soft I can also mix and match it with other palettes if I want but I would love to get to use this bubblegum palette because the last time I used it was last winter so I really do want to give it some more love this season a palette that made it into my collection finally in 2022 and a palette that I have wanted for a really long time is the Sydney Grace Enduring Love I I have absolutely loved using this palette and I don't think this is just a winter palette I think this is something you can use year-round but I do think this is perfect for this season as well because again you get all of these cool tones you get a few neutrals as well you have this beautiful shimmery pale pink you have this gorgeous plum purplish plum here's another deep purple and then you have that beautiful tealy blue these are really really stunning shimmers right here this one leans a little bit like antique gold green while this one is more gray so there's a ton of variety here and i think this is a sensational winter palette so if you have the enduring love i would say definitely pull it out you can also do some nice valentine's day looks with this because it does have a few of those plummy pinky tones so i think this is a fantastic fantastic one for the winter the last two palettes are the most special and have actually the most color in them. So one of the palettes that I really want to bring back this winter season because I haven't used it in a while is a palette that came out last winter in winter of, was it winter of 2021? Yeah, I think it was winter of 2021. And I'm talking about the Club Nebula, which was a collaboration between Kaleidos and Angelica Nyquist. So this palette 
while it might seem like it's way too colorful for the winter, I think it can work really, really beautifully because of these really deep mattes including that beautiful blue. You also have this really stunning pinky purple topper. You have Nova, which can add that icy wintry look. I even think Red Giant would be a fantastic shade to use this season. And then, you know, for, for the pops of color on occasion, you will do have the options to add some teals and a bright lime greens. This Astro shade is really beautiful. This is, this was one of my absolute favorite palettes of 2021 and it still remains one of my top palettes. So I really want to give it some love this season. And I think this would be also a great one that would carry over into spring. I mean, honestly, I think you can use it absolutely all year round and figure out ways to create a ton, a ton of different looks. But if you're, again, if you're somebody that kind of needs to see it from the perspective of a season, I think you can still find tons of looks that are winter appropriate inside this palette. And yes, I keep mine in the box. I don't keep all of my palettes in the box, but this is definitely one I keep in the box because it is very special and I wanna keep it pristine as much as possible. Okay, and then I have actually quite a few Pat McGrath palettes, but I have yet to use most of my Pat McGrath palettes. Embarrassing, I know. I talked about that in my Basket of Shame video. I didn't actually even show you guys the palettes that I have from Pat McGrath that haven't been used because I was thinking maybe of doing a separate video on that at some point. but. My very first Mothership palette, which I was lucky enough to win in a giveaway back in beginning of no, end of 2020, beginning of 2021, was the Divine Rose 2, which is um, Mothership 8, I believe, the Divine Rose 2. This is one of the few that I've actually used. But aside from that, I also thought this would be a great winter palette because it will add the pops of color. It's perfect, I think, for the softer, more romantic looks, you know, Valentine's Day type of looks, because you do have, of course, a lot of pinks in here. But, you know, you also have the darker burgundy brown. You have some neutrals. You have, of course, the special shades. And I think some of them can work really nicely to create some warm looks because it would be nice to have that option and not just have all of my shadows be some sort of a shade of gray. You know, we don't want 50 shades of gray over here. We want some variety. Yeah, like this color is really beautiful. And there's definitely ways of mixing and matching these shades to create beautiful Beautiful soft winter looks. So I wanted to put this one in here also because I'd like to revisit it. I mean, I know I have a lot of Pat McGrath to visit for the first time, but I also would like to revisit the Divine Rose too because I haven't used it in a while. Honorable mention, and I didn't want to put this in my top 10 because it's actually already in a project. It's in my basket of doom is the palette I have on my eyes and that is the ColourPop It's My Pleasure. As I mentioned, the pinks and the purples is something I go for mostly in the winter. So if you have this palette and you also tend to gravitate towards pinks and purples only during this season, then maybe this would be a perfect opportunity for you to explore this palette a little further, see if you still like it, which is essentially what I'm doing right now. But this is not part of my 10. This is just an honorable mention. Now I want to get into 10 palettes that are brand new in my collection that I think are perfect for this season. And hopefully this will give me more motivation to use some of these during January, February, and even going into March and beyond. A couple of these palettes I have found since filming my Basket of Shame, so I missed a few palettes. I apologize. I think I put a note into the video on one of these, but there was a couple of others that I have yet since found. One of those is this MAC, what was this one called? The Feast Your Eyes palette. Now, it came out as a fall collection, and when you see the color story, if you haven't seen this palette, although I know a lot of people have this one. And if you look at the packaging and if you look at the palette, you're going to say, Natalia, this is fall. Like what? 
what are you talking about? This is not a winter palette, this is fall. But then I would argue that if I close these two warm shades, I could totally see myself using this in the winter because I have these really soft colors here. So this one, while it's in champagne and I haven't swatched to use this palette, but in the pan to me, it gives a little bit of a pearly pinky finish almost. It's almost like it has a little bit of that rose gold in it. I mean, we have here a straight up pink key mauve. We have just neutral shades here that can be used any time of the year. Here's a gorgeous purpley plum color. So again, I, I like those shades in the winter. And then we have just a neutral champagne gold. Yes, the green and the copper might make this look a lot more fall appropriate than winter appropriate. But I think if you cover that up, you can really make this palette go a bit of a different way. So I wanted to include this one because because I've been dying to try it for a long time and just haven't gotten around to it and completely forgot to include it. In my defense, I forgot to include it in my basket of shame because I had a separate little pile of a few palettes that I was wanting to use first before any of the other basket of shame palettes. And this was one of them. So it was sitting in a separate little pile and I completely forgot to throw it in the basket for that video. But this is one that I would like to explore. A couple of Juvia's Place palettes that I mentioned in that video that have the mauve tones, mauve tones and purple tones. This is my winter color story. So I thought that I should definitely include these two. I know I talked about how I would like to try to compare the mauves and the berries to the melt she's in parties because I've wanted that palette for a really long time, but I didn't feel like the berries really spoke to me as a winter palette for some reason. That one kind of was a little bit more fall appropriate for me, but these two I thought would be perfect this season. Another palette you guys didn't get to see in the Basket of Shame video, but I did include a little note that I forgot to mention it, is the Natasha Denona Love Palette. I bought this on sale, like it, it at some point last year or whenever, went on 50% off and I snagged it in store because on the website it was already all sold out and I just by chance was at a Sephora that still had them and I still have yet to use it. And of course, with Valentine's Day coming up, I wanna have this handy because if other brands are about to bombard us with 23 different pink, purple, and mauve tone palettes, I can refer to all of these that I'm mentioning right now with those tones and convince myself that I don't need any of them because I still have a ton of brand new palettes I need to explore. I have seen a bunch of people rearrange this one, so I guess once I actually start to use it, I'll have to see if this layout works for me or if I'm also going to try to rearrange it into something more cohesive where I go from like light to dark or something. I do tend to like that. I like to have a bit of a structure to my palettes. I get a little bit sometimes overwhelmed by haphazard color stories. I'll see. I mean, considering I've never even swatched or used this, it's too early to tell how I'm going to feel about it. Two beige cosmetics palettes that, as I was showing you guys in my basket of shame, I even mentioned I thought would be really good for the winter. The uh, Paris, what is this? Passion in Paris. It has the plastic on still. I still haven't figured out how to take it off, so I'm sorry. I'm sure you're getting a glare. And then the Blueberry Muffin. If you haven't seen those or if you you haven't seen my other video that's what those two color stories look like and i think with the blues and the neutrals this would be absolutely perfect for the winter what i love about the blueberry muffin is that it also gives me tons of icy sparkly options there's a silver there's this pearlescent color that might be a topper shade. Even these uh, slightly warmer shimmers, I think would be fantastic because they would be very bright on the eye. And I think that's really, really pretty for winter. And then in contrast, there's a lot of the deeper blues and purples and you know grays and things like that to create a more sultry look. And then this one is just a more fun version of that because it has more of the purples. I also 
love this row of the burgundy shades so that could be another great option for an easy valentine's day look there's just tons of darker more interesting shades and again there is that chunkier looking topper shade that's probably gonna add a lot of shine and a lot of dimension to a look all right speaking of purples i threw in the glam light wine palette which is of course none of these i've used these are still straight out of my basket of shame pile that i just filmed with recently so this is very very purple like very very purple but i thought if there's ever a season that i'm going to pull for this the most it would be definitely the winter i do tend to wear these darker purples and blues and burgundies primarily in the winter time or when the weather is cooler so i definitely would recommend pulling this one out if you have it one that is a very obvious choice is the nomad whistler snow lodge i mean if the name doesn't tell you and the location doesn't tell you that this is all about winter then I, I don't know what does you've got everything from the outer packaging to the inner color story screaming winter i love this icy blue i'm so excited to use this on my actual eyes um, these snow bunnies are adorable like the imprints this little snow bunny that's a great shade we have another great icy shade shade the powder specialist so of course this one is imitating the the snow and the reflection of it we've got the darker shades here on this side this so amused so amused so amused looks absolutely stunning um and i think that would also be beautiful and then we have these beautiful teals the après ski and whistler and of course for a pop of color we have that beautiful bright gold shade so i'm really excited to use this palette this one is kind of one of the tippy top palettes that i would like to use this winter i want to make sure that i finally try this one i just have to remember to take a photo first because of those beautiful imprints that i do not want to destroy um, i saw my friend colin mention the next palette um i think they also mentioned the nomad whistler but this was a Pat McGrath palette that Colin mentioned and I thought ooh that's one of the ones I have that I've never used so I should put it in this video to remind me to finally use it this is the very first mothership this is oh gosh what is it called subliminal so this is the mothership one subliminal the packaging is as always gorgeous and looks like so and here we have the color story so you've got the cool tones all throughout here a bright shimmer there and these special shades so we see a pattern here we've got the blue we've got the icy shade and then we've got one that is pulling pink and yes there's dual chromes and whatnot there's the pop of yellow but it's not like a super bright bright yellow it's more it's almost like more of a pale yellow with a lot of shine to it. So I think this is a really, really cool palette to pull out in the winter if you have this one. And I definitely need to finally use it for the first time this season. I am excited about that. And then last but not least, since I keep talking about how I like more of the purples and the pinks and the berries in this season, I would like to finally also try the berries and cream from Dominique Cosmetics. I've had this palette for ages and ages and ages and have yet to use it and i think this is so perfect for this season because of all of these different ranges of pinks and purples and berries and then of course since it's berries and cream it's very fitting that there's also tons of beautiful neutrals as well as this pop of blue a black to deepen things up gorgeous um shimmers over here in the corner these three so yeah i think this is a great one so if you still have your dominique cosmetics berries and cream first of all please let me know down below how you like it and how the quality is and if it is a palette that you enjoy then i would highly recommend that you pull it out and you give it some love this season and with that those are the eyeshadow palettes that i have in my collection that i think are really winter appropriate and really perfect for this season i apologize if i'm a little low energy as i said it's been a super super long day but i really wanted to film this because a winter is not going to last forever and b uh starting tomorrow
tomorrow I have my work week. Um, so I'll be teaching for the next six days and most likely the only time I'll have to dedicate to YouTube is doing a little bit of editing here and there and posting some of these videos for you guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I'd love to hear what are some of your top picks for your winter palettes, especially if you're not on YouTube. You know, you don't have to give me a top 10 or like I did top 10 and then top 10 of things I've never even used. You can just give me your top one or three or five or whatever you're willing to share with me. I would absolutely love to hear what you are pulling for and using this winter. And if you're on the other side of the globe and it's nice and sunny and warm, first of all, we are all jealous over here. And second of all, I would love to hear what you're using right now. What are your summer picks? And with that, I am going to get to sleep as soon as possible. I hope that you guys are all doing really, really well. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Please like this video if you've liked it. That really helps me out a lot, especially now that I'm returning back to YouTube and trying to film more regularly and trying to get back in the groove and get on the good side of the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> Other than that, I hope that you're all well. I thank you so much for being here. I hope that you're staying safe and healthy, that you're continuing. It takes a, oh, I can't even talk. That's it. I can't even, I can't even do my outro. I don't even know like what's slower, my brain, my mouth, my eyes right now. I'm just like ready, I think, to fall asleep right here, sitting in front of this bright hypnotic ring light. I hope that you're all safe and healthy, that you're continuing to take care of yourselves and those around you. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys. Okay, made it. Oh, that was such a hot mess. If anyone still stays subscribed to my channel after this video, then I know I have me some good friends here in YouTube land. That's all I got to say about that.